Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel and today I have come up with yet one more game of chess that I played some time back and I thought I should share it with you. This was a pretty interesting game and I am playing white and my opponent is playing black and let us get on with the game and I start with my king pawn as always. I love to start with my king pawn. My opponent responds with Sicilian defense. And I place my bishop over here. This is called Baudelaire's attack from my side. Uh, he moves his pawn. I take out my knight. He moves his pawn to the further right side from uh, of his right. And then I move my center pawn over here to exert more uh, to exert more pressure at the center of the board. Let me see if he eats my pawn no he doesn't take my pawn and he moves his knight i move my knight to the right side with the with the plan of attacking the square which is f7 that is the weaker square that always i like to target that square f7 but he uh, realized that my plan was attacking f7 so he obstructs my bishop I take it out of my path and he also eats my bishop. It is an exchange of bishop. I take the pawn and attack the queen. The queen is moved to an area of safety. But I do not want my knight to be out from that, uh, that square which is uh, e6. That is a pretty important square for me. I do not want my knight to move out of that. So that's why I support it with my pawn. Now he can't eat it with his queen. He eats my pawn and that was hanging and I didn't realize that my pawn was hanging. A mistake from my side. Definitely I should have paid more attention and should have guarded it. Anyway, let's get on with the game. I castle. He moves his other knight. I take out my pawn with the intention of getting my bishop on the longest diagonal starting from the lower bottom side of the left side, lower bottom, to the extreme right, top right. But he keeps coming at me this time with his knight. So both his knights are facing me, it look pretty ominous. And that's why I bring my rook to counter one of his knights where I can eat it and where it doesn't have a backup. He eats my knight. I eat his knight back with my rook. He comes back to the original position where he started from. That was pretty interesting because I can't take it with my queen or with my rook as he has a supporting pawn on c5. And that is kind of bothering me. I need to do something about it. For now, I place the bishop on the longest diagonal. He comes up with his queen, threatening my rook. I support it with my knight. He castles. I move my pawn forward. And thereby making a long pawn chain starting from a2. And ending at d5. He moves his pawn, basically uh, giving some space to his bishop so it can come to a better uh, place, position away from where he can also give some, uh, exert some pressure on my side. Okay, I move my pawn, keeping in mind his irritating pawn that I was talking about, which is on a c5. So he moves his bishop now, attacking my knight. I should not have cared for it because my queen is already supporting it. But here I have done a mistake. I move my knight here, which was protecting the rook. Somehow I missed that. I forgot about the rook. I moved my knight here and I lost my rook. And I was pretty, pretty disappointed. Uh, because this was my uh, my mistake and it was a pretty costly mistake I, I i lost my rook but then you have to get on with the game and shake it off your mind otherwise your performance will even decrease further so as i was talking about that irritating pawn here i take it 
he takes it back and now if you just concentrate on the board there is a dark square where his pawn is, uh, where his uh, knight is sitting that is d4 that is the point i am trying to target and three of my pieces my one of my knights one of one knight of mine one bishop and one queen three of them are targeting that so if there is an exchange of pieces here i think i'll be in a good position there so i eat his knight his pawn captures my knight I take it with the bishop his queen cannot take it because of my queen and he has to move his rook otherwise i'm going to eat it with my bishop he moves his rook thereby exerting a very strong line of threat on the f file i kind of try to counter it by moving my pawn a bit forward so that it it faces some obstruction and what does he res how does he respond he comes with his bishop and gives me check i have to remove it from my path so i eat his bishop he eats my bishop i move my king out of check at this position i would like to say that uh, his position is pretty good because he has two rooks i have only one rook so he definitely has more power but the only strong point i have here or a area of strength that i have is my two advancing pawns towards his king and his rook these two advancing pawns are kind of a threat to him and they are my area of strength i have to develop on that area of strength with this thought in my mind i keep playing even further first of all i uh, i kind of think that he uh, my opponent sensed that also so he wants to break this pawn chain which i have in my e c and d file so he brings his pawn forward to do something about it but i kind of am prepared for it so i support my pawns even further with my rook so in the event of an attack there will be a discovered check he has to face he realizes that he removes his king out of danger and there is this opportunity of me to eat his pawn with my pawn but that will be a mistake i will lose my whatever little bit of advantage i have so i move my pawn further up he can't eat it he can't eat it with his rook because my queen will gobble it up and then it will give a double threat double attack on his king and his rook so he comes close by and waits there i think he's running out of idea a little bit now so taking advantage of that i support my pawn even further he makes a double attack what use of that double attack i'm not sure but anyway i concentrate on my two pawns over here and move it even further now his rook is under threat so his pawn it's my pawn to remove that pawn from there so at this point in time i would like to say that the game is in a very interesting phase and all my attack is towards the top left part of the chessboard where his king is kind of getting getting choked and therefore my advancing pawn and my rook and my queen are exerting such pressure on him so he is little bit uncomfortable that's why he, he thinks about it for quite some time and then he eats my pawn he thinks that it will at least ease the pain a bit but it doesn't because i eat it back and now my rook is near to him and he is definitely definitely uncomfortable he brings his rook to counter my advancing rook but i give him check by this move by placing my queen on b1 and this is a check and now his king doesn't have any place to breathe the only only squares that he can move to is a7 and a8 otherwise it cannot move anywhere else his queen that is there on e3 basically is a mere spectator it cannot do anything it 
can't it can't block the check because it will be eaten up mercilessly so it stands there looking at its helpless king as the king hops on to a7 okay and here i have the nice opportunity to eat up his rook and i ate up his rook and now if you count our pieces are same so I have one rook and one queen he also has one rook and one queen so somehow the disadvantage that I was in I have kind of nullified it and the potential danger he realizes because there can be checkmate at any point in time so he brings the rook close to his king to safeguard the king from danger and also he is now aiming at my queen but I don't like that that's why one of the advantages that I have as I already told you is that my pawn my pawn is so on on his ter in, inside his territory d uh, d6 pawn and therefore it allows me to place my rook over here so if he eats my d if he eats my c7 rook my pawn will eat it back so that is the support i have from the pawn that is a very very strong advantage as i already told in one of the earlier videos pawn itself doesn't have that much strength but at some key position they become very powerful and that is the kind of pawn that is over there lying over there for me which is helping me a lot and please note that his rook cannot eat my queen because my rook is already there so he can't basically he's helpless now so the only option i think he found is he ate my rook my pawn eats his rook back and now what can he do he doesn't like the idea of my pawn getting converted uh, to a queen i think so he wants to do something about it so he brings his queen over here to eat my pawn but don't you think it is a bit too late it is checkmate time i think one master stroke and it is all over i bring my queen on top of the board there you go and that is checkmate and that ends the game uh, before i close the video i would like to say that um, uh, you know i think you enjoyed this game and also it's checkmate because you know you can see the king, the king cannot go anywhere and king cannot also eat the queen because the pawn is there so basically it is checkmate and uh, before ending the video i want to make a couple of points that what i want to say is that even though you are in a state of bother where your materials are not there or your your opponent's materials are more or something you should not lose your hope you should, you should still continue to play and you should you should focus on your area of strength because if you examine the chessboard at any point in time there will be somewhere where you have a little bit of a better position and you will have some area of strength most likely and you should try to develop that area of strength you should stick to your plan and and be more proactive make your own plan stick to your plan develop your area of strength and maybe sometimes even though you have lesser material maybe you can turn the table round and you can convert a game that you should have otherwise lost you can convert it to a winning game thank you very much i hope you like the video bye